Egzamin ustny z języka angielskiego ma formę rozmowy zdającego z osobą egzaminującą w obecności drugiego członka zespołu przedmiotowego, który nie bierze aktywnego udziału w rozmowie. Zestaw egzaminacyjny składa się z trzech zadań i zawiera pytania w języku polskim oraz materiał ikonograficzny. Zadanie pierwsze – rozmowa z odgrywaniem roli. Zadanie drugie – opis ilustracji i odpowiedzi na trzy pytania. Zadanie trzecie – wypowiedź na podstawie materiału stymulującego i odpowiedzi na dwa pytania. Celem części ustnej egzaminu maturalnego jest ocena kompetencji komunikacyjnej i językowej zdającego. Maturzysta zda egzamin, jeśli na 30 możliwych do zdobycia punktów zdobędzie co najmniej 9, czyli 30%. I'd like you to choose one set. Okay. Oh, what number is it? Mm, it's 23. 23. Okay, so can I get it? Thank you. Well, first of all, warm up, right? Um, what do you like most about your neighborhood? I like that there's quiet and peaceful there because I live far from the main street. Uh, moreover, there's a forest near to my house where I like to walk with my dog. Okay. Uh, what job would you like to do in the future? Um, I would like to be a kindergarten teacher um, because I'm a caring person who finds it easy to get along with children. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that babysitting my younger siblings was a turning point and finding my future career path. All right. Um, is there anything in your diet that you would like to change? Yes, there is. I have a habit of snacking on sweets at night uh, and I wish I could get rid of it, but or at least replace it with candy, with something sweet healthier. Okay, all right. So I wish you uh, good luck, of course. Um, all right, uh, now uh, I want you to focus on uh, on your set and um, it is number 23. Uh, first of all, exercise number one, okay, the first task. Uh, and you've got um, 30 seconds to get ready, okay? Okay. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I would like to buy gifts for my parents and my younger sister. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and my mom, uh, she loves arts. Uh, she's a big fan of ceramics uh -huh. and she has a big collection of uh, beautiful patterned mugs and plates. Right. Uh, and I've been thinking of buying a vase. A vase? Uh, oh. In a bright green color for her. Uh huh. What style does she prefer? Um, she prefers like um, vintage things. Okay. In All general. Right. Uh huh. From the 60s or yeah, the 70s. All exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, Talking about my dad, uh, he he likes sport, and he's a dedicated uh, football fan. And when he sees a thing related to his uh, favorite football team, he immediately buys it. Right. Uh, so uh, I've been thinking of buying a scarf in uh, uh, colors of Scotland's football team. Uh huh. All right. Uh, well, what about a cap? Um, I think he he has a lot of cups oh, already, right. mm -hmm. so a scarf would be a better option. Uh, and my sister, uh, she really loves animals, 
especially horses. Mm -hmm. uh, and she owns various uh, horse figures and toys, and most of them are pink. Okay. All right. And mm -hmm. yeah, so Go on. Um, I think that pink stuffed horse would be a perfect option. Um, yeah, and money doesn't matter for me. All right. Um, is that all you wanted to say? Yes. Yes? Okay. Oh, thank you. Now uh, let's um, move on to task uh, number two. Okay. Here you have to, of course, describe uh, the photo, right? But please let me... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And you've got 10 seconds. So, uh, in the picture, I can see a young man who is probably a tourist. Uh, he's wearing a black beanie, a waterproof coat, dark pants and lace-up shoes. Uh, he also got a hiking backpack on his back. And uh, he's squatting over a map which is lying on the ground. Uh, he seems really focused, um, I guess uh, he's reading the map in order to find the right path because he might have got lost in the mountains. Uh, and yeah, in the background I can see green bushes and the sun which is rising over the mountains. Okay, alright, so now um, the questions, right? Uh, why has the man decided to travel alone? Mm, uh, he might have decided to travel alone because uh, he might wanted to relax and enjoy the silence and peaceful surroundings. Or he might have wanted to set a new hiking record okay. for himself. Mm -hmm. All right. In your opinion, what should a perfect holidays be like? Mm, so, uh, in my opinion, when it comes to the perfect holidays, uh, the destination doesn't really matter. It depends on people who you surround yourself with. Uh, and it's good to go on a trip with people who don't have problems of compromises. All oh, right. Okay, and the last question. Um, tell us about a trip that was special to you. Mm. I'm sorry, nothing comes to my mind. Okay. All right. Um, so now uh, let's move on to, to the last task, okay? And uh, here you have um, one minute, okay, to get ready. When you are ready, please let us know, right? You're ready? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so, the best uh, picture for schools, newspapers, article about inclusion of disabled people in social life uh, is the picture number one. Uh, because uh, I believe that the girl who is sitting in a wheelchair, uh, she doesn't feel excluded. Uh, she is uh, equal with her peers because uh, the fact that she's sitting in that wheelchair and they are sitting on basic chairs, uh, it doesn't uh, change a thing. They are hanging out and having fun. So I think that's all about, that's what inclusion is all about. Uh, and I would reject the second picture because the first thing when I look at it is uh, that comes to my mind is animal therapy uh, and
And I would also reject the third picture because when I look at that man with artificial limb, uh, I think of like Paralympic Games, maybe overcoming your barriers. So that's not really related to the topic. So yeah, all in all, I would choose the first picture. Okay, um, now the questions, okay? Um, why is it important to promote uh, sporting activities among people with physical disabilities? Uh, could you repeat the question, please? Yes, of course. Why is it important to promote uh, sporting activities among people with physical disabilities? Uh, okay, so uh, it is important because uh, they might get motivated not to give up their dreams. And I believe that there are some disabled people uh, who might think that there are barriers in their lives that they are not able to overcome. And I think that sport requires hard work no matter if you are disabled or not. Uh, so promoting these sport activities might give them strength to believe in themselves and try new challenges. Okay. Um, and the second question, a question, uh, how can young people benefit from attending school with uh, students with various disabilities? And uh, justify your um, answer. Uh, okay, so um, people often have some prejudices uh, about top topics they are not familiar with. Uh, so, um, I believe that being around uh, people with various disabilities from a young age uh, can turn a person into a more educated adult in the future. So, uh, young people can learn uh, how to stop only focusing on themselves and they can start to notice uh, their other people's everyday struggles. And um, I believe that their level of empathy and sensitivity increases. Okay, uh, thank you very much. This is the end of your exam. Thank you. Uczennica otrzymała 27 punktów na 30 możliwych. Przystąpiła i zrealizowała wszystkie zadania. W zadaniu pierwszym odniosła się do wszystkich z czterech komponentów, jednakże rozwinęła trzy z tych komponentów, co doprowadziło do przyznania jej pięciu na maksymalne sześć punktów. W zadaniu drugim natomiast nie odpowiedziała na jedno z pytań w zadaniu, co doprowadziło do przyznania jej czterech zamiast sześciu punktów. W zadaniu trzecim uczennica zrealizowała wszystkie komponenty odnosząc się do nich i rozwijając je, co doprowadziło do przyznania maksymalnej ilości punktów sześciu. W pozostałych kryteriach uczennica otrzymała maksymalną ilość punktów. W kryterium zakres struktur leksykalnych i gramatycznych zaprezentowała bardzo ciekawy zbiór struktur leksykalnych, struktur o niskim stopniu pospolitości. Jej wypowiedź była poprawna, Nieliczne błędy nie doprowadziły do zablokowania komunikatu lub jego zniekształcenia, co doprowadziło do przyznania w tym kryterium punktów czterech. Bardzo drobne i sporadyczne błędy w wymowie nie zakłóciły naturalności i płynności wypowiedzi, dlatego też uczennica zdobyła maksymalną ilość punktów dwa. Cały egzamin odbywał się bardzo płynnie i w sposób bardzo naturalny, dlatego też osoba zdająca zdobyła maksymalną ilość punktów 2.